going on everybody i am the one the only the w-o-o-k-i-e joined here by the normal cast of misfits we have a kitty oh now kitty's gone we oh well now we lost dr sheep but we got big z <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just losing everybody we okay. got the ewokiest of ewoks ewok jr hello keyboard community glad the, to be here the choke show himself Drascor. Hey guys, how's it going? And our resident PhD, Dr. Sheep. Meow. So we're all, <laughs> we're going to start out with our titular segment, OP News, uh, Sheep. Ahoy. Oh, oh I'm sorry, ahoy. Uh, ahoy. We're, missi- we're missing suddenly today. But uh, we're starting out with, uh, with our titular segment, OP News, Sheep. What's going on in OP? Okay, so OP News soon. Has turned into OP news later. <laughs> later when? Same as soon. Oh, got it. I'm on now, board. So there, there are quite a bit of rumors going around on what the store championship kit contains, uh, which is now six special treatment decks, three sets of premium keys, mm. and twenty four haunted indicators. And that's to support three eight-player tournaments, so two decks, a set of uh, keys. keys, and a chain, or chain. Haunted tracker, chain tracker, it's the same thing, man. So your haunted tracker, um, maybe maybe they took all the old chain trackers and they just stamped haunted on them. They just, I, they got a hot a branding stuff. iron and just melted. No, 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 it's a sticker. It's a sticker. They oh, got, it's just like a, a sticker? Vi- a vinyl sticker. It comes yeah, in the pack they couldn't and even, put it right on there. They couldn't uh, make I mean, a- Jeremy's not busy. He could just put stickers on yeah. all these they, thousands of crackers, right? Like, even get wait, one is of those that on our list? Like, like, when's the last time we got OP news? Like, like... We do have a running tally. We can go back and check. Uh, That's what, like, is. what is the date? Like, like these guys work forty hour weeks. Like, what do we think their actual like thirty work thirty two and, is thirty two and a, a half through Friday? Uh, are this like half. five people in a very small company? So wait a minute, hold you know, on. Somebody's got to plunge the toilet, right? Did you at one time give us like the the basic yeah, the, eight the hour cor- workday, the corporate eight hour like workday corporate position, like where there's thirty of y'all, you're sitting in cubes, no one really knows what you're doing. Like, I'm in an office. Like, Hurley's got to be around the corner. Like, Luke's doing whatever he's doing in the in in some in in, in the box of of coding land software. Like, what do you think Jeremy and Josh do for eight hours in a single day? Because it's like got to put the the haunted stickers on the, gotta, on the say, they're, they're doing haunted like, what, stickers. What, no did comment. We talk about what there's we do is there's like, lots to do. It's a small company. Very like small. Like what, Dress? Well, somebody's you know? got to put somebody has like, to take the decks from the pile of decks and put them in that's boxes. That's not them. That's I, Artiforge people. No, so no, Z, they definitely we, were doing that. Uh, see, we yeah. know that they're doing a lot of behind the scenes work. Uh, we're sure that just like your job and mine, they don't. Oh, we don't always see everything that's going into it. So I will defend Josh and I'll be stoned for it. But there you go. Like, like, but what's like? You Jeremy's still give me one single example. Game Center. Like y'all can't even think of things to make up for them to do. So, so we uh, know coffee. Coffee's important. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Hurley does like coffee. They may each have to take a turn getting Hurley coffee. I could uh-huh. definitely see Jeremy getting CTP coffee all day. I'm like, okay, Jeremy's job's accounted for. And I mean, you know <laughs> Janet brings all the paperwork around three times and makes sure yeah. they actually do it right. Because you know I these guys she- are handing in stuff and they're missing yeah. signatures and they're and oh, yeah. and Janet's coming back around. She's like, do it right. Where's your Not TPS? Where's your TPS <laughs> reports? Exactly. Because in my mind, exactly. Janet smokes a pack of Marlboro Reds a day. I don't know why, but she just does. Guys, you want to hear a too ridiculous to be uh, made up office story? So, oh, so boy. they just 
rolled out this new process in in my my workplace and um this new process is the uh the product operating system which they abbreviate everywhere as pos i'm like what what <laughs> you're telling us we have to do we have point, to, we have point to do of, the pos process now? yeah like, what POS is this? has been standard <laughs> software name forever oh if you well, work in retail sale. but i would say point of sale point of sale yeah. Uh, but this is but this they all also <laughs> all of those POS systems that that acronym doubles for sure. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, because somebody's every, like this every is a good idea. point of sale system I've ever worked it with is a POS. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. It's, they're all Oh, uh, my bad. store just swept to Shopify's version, but not the super premium paid Shopify, and it's extra POS y. <sighs> But it yeah. interfaces with all of your digital sales platforms, so it does that. In other news, I guess this is, is this Artiforge or is this Ghost Galaxy? Um, Dream Trace has been announced on February seventh. Dream Trace was announced, which is, it says Ghost Galaxies, but I don't. Is it? Wouldn't it be Strange Stars? Aren't they it's the a strange company? stars company, I think. It's a strange stars company. Okay, so Dream Trace is the new token maker for Ghost Galaxy. Am I getting this right? Those generic. Yeah, it's a generic token. Token. But you have to. You have to. Okay, so you have to take the dream here, sheep, and you've got to like mold it, right? And if gotta... they can stamp Chain Trackers Haunted, they can get a little stamp. Yeah. And stamp space dollar on the gold ones for me. Yes, see? You mold the dream. Um, or or do you have to like get a hot thing and brand each one? Wait, Listen. why when I Google Dream Trays, it comes up um in Roseville, Minnesota, Google says permanently closed. Because well, it hasn't opened yet. No, because that was mm. a name for something they were gonna do previously. If, if you, you start go... looking at Gene Chase, it was founded in like 2020 to do something else. Oh, Christian T. Peterson announcing Dream Trace uh, two years ago. Well, here's here's the link that they just. Oh, never mind. She beat me. Um, I'm I'm hitting enter anyways, so that mine's on the bottom. Dream Trace is a location based VR company selling so two it, distinct it products, says, VR it says services, this is what and VR doing. Dream Trace game tokens. Ghost Galaxy is proud to announce its new Dream Trace imprint, which will cover an array of gaming supplies, accessories, and play enhancement products. So I'm guessing that could be sleeves, that could be deck boxes, that could be all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think you're talking I more am probably token stuff. I am yeah. probably I um, pie in the sky right now, but, you know... I, I just can't dream. see another company bothering to compete with how many sleeve suppliers are already out there. Like, that's not a lucrative market. I Okay, so you can pre-order on Miniature Market right now. Dream Trace Game Tokens. Yeah. So there's Sorceress Purple right here, which so just looks like a purple disc. Did that, they yeah, because so, yeah, they have Chimera Blue, Dragon Scale Ember, Poppy Milk White, and Icker Green. Acre green. I kind of want okay. acre so, green. My question is, did they actually get an extruder where they're extruding these themselves, or when uh, one of them was out of country not too long ago, were they over in China and somebody's like, hey, we got these boxes and there's a million of each of these colors and we don't know what to do with them and we'll sell them to you for like shipping. And they're like, oh, great. So they got like a million each color and they got they got Josh sitting there at a desk counting out 20 tokens, 40, 40 tokens per box, which they Two. can, they, they might be able to print the boxes. So they're printing the boxes Three. and then, then they got Josh Jeremy counting 40 tokens into a box. And then, and then you sell them for nine ninety nine, uh-huh. And then you sell nice. them for nine ninety nine. Absolutely. That's pretty good. The so wild conjecture is here, man. We Genius. are, we are Genius. highly focused today. I love it, yep. boys. Um, at least but, we've accounted for Josh's time. Yes. And then Janet, she's she's checking him. And she's like, ah, this one's underweight. And she makes yep, him redo send it. Send them back. Josh, yep. I think you got too many in this one. 
<laughs> but I need you to open it up and redo it. You haven't it's like that guy your... gets fired for giving you the extra chicken nugget. You know? Right. You haven't you filled think out she gets your paperwork. Hit them with a ruler or something when they mess Ooh, up. Probably. Maybe. Probably. It's like one of those old school wood ones, too. No, it's yeah. like an AOA deck. They just whack you with They just AOA throw deck. AOA decks with some of these screws they, up. <laughs> they have excess DT decks for uh, throwing. Oh, oh, there you go. Got it. That makes more <laughs> sense. So, so every time somebody screws up, somebody just gets whacked with a DT deck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> makes sense. That's a good it's use. That's the best use of them. I'll say it's a good use for them. So, <laughs> not okay, complaining. so now that we've been in name. Do we have anything real to talk about? <laughs> yes. Well, not like real news, okay. but we have um, our series we've been doing. Last week, we went over Equidon. The week before that, we went over to Brobnar. Oh, we got news before that. Yeah. Yeah, we got I pre-release this game? upcoming. Uh, uh, well, not, well, by the we time know, this drops. Next but we weekend, knew sure. that already. I mean, it's coming. Go do yep. pre-release. Yeah. So it's find your only... local store. That's got this and play. The one how do you, store that how do you find pre-release? that local store? You knows. you go well, to that's get, true. you go to the master same way vault. that you find us. You go so to the I will master say, vault and you go yeah, so into their into their game store to locator. Houston, Texas on Sunday. Or Philly. T T deck. Inhale the smoke <laughs> and let it lead you. I did so. Barlow, one of my local dudes, uh, he has made this whole graphic that's really cool saying in the Philadelphia tri-state area, here's all the pre-release dates, here's all the store championship dates, and here's the regular, uh, the dates, uh, the like the regular night dates. Um, and it's wait, pretty who, sweet. Wait, who did this? The marketing department? No. Yeah. No. Just like oh, our oh. local guy. The yeah. fans, i.e., yeah. the marketing department. Yeah, I should chat this to Jeremy. I don't know yeah, what to like. Just be like, really dude, like you do, should do this. Do stuff like that. Like that would be good. All right, here I'll I'll paste it in our chat right here. Look at that. Isn't that kind of cool? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's actually nice. Really, really nice. Like what? if that had been done for the country or somehow, some way. Like I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, but as we talked about a little bit, our AC. Our Archon's Corner um, decks have shown up. Some Ooh. some of us got them. But in addition Ooh. to that, I made Wookie do work. Oh, it ha, ha, nice. Him, it took him two weeks to deliver yep. on the work mm-hmm. I asked to do. But he did finally do work. We figured out who our biggest long-term Patreons are, who's who have um, given us the most money. The most space dollars. Give us your yep. space dollars. Uh, so we have chosen... Uh, from them top few and we have sent out Archon's Corners decks to some of our Patreons. So we, don't know who, well, we know who you, they are. You guys don't know who they are. With our wonderful yeah. logo and the beautiful white field. Grayish. <laughs> it's a grayish field. It's a grayish right. field. Yeah, that's a hey strange. sheep, if I want to get one of these, how can I how can I do that? Forty nine ninety nine to <laughs> Dr. Sheep. Okay. Like <laughs> or you can be part of our Patreon. You might start getting a lot of 49, 49.99s from uh, our listeners out there. Uh, I don't actually have that many left, so uh, you can't do that. Oh, can't do it. But you could become a patron, and the next time we decide to give out stuff, which is often, we do give out uh, stuff from Fine. actually pretty often, but we? Um, uh, often enough. I mean, hey, okay. listen, you get early access to all the special events slash tournament type deals we run right you get ad free episodes so you don't have to listen to the crummy ad for your local strip club that nobody goes to because of the roaches right um you know and there is going to be a thing here shortly um that is going to be popping up on youtube that you know you're going to get early access to so you're going to get early access to those videos I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And not only mention that, you do get some alpha scores from drawbetter.cards and more deck uploads to get your alpha scores so you know what your deck's, you know, scorings are. Just saying, lots of benefits to the Archon's Corner Patreon. You can go to archonscorner.com, or I'm sorry, Archon's Corner. You go to patreon.com forward slash Archon's Corner. You can join today for as little as a dollar. You can join today. 
we plugged it, Wait. guys. We actually did a plug. Look at us. It's only been like Good five job. years, but we actually did a plug. One yeah, day I opened we'll my get that, that pledge tier that allows you to like block out specific cast members. Oh, that's great. While you, listen. you know what? If the technology <laughs> only existed, it would already be done. And then it turns out that uh, when you listen to the cast, all it says, all you just hear is, ahoy. <laughs> that just suddenly helps that you want to hear. It's a two hour episode and it's 15 minutes ahoy. and all you hear is ahoy. And then that's it. Ahoy. That's the end of the episode. I, I know I posted somewhere that for a hundred bucks, you could write the script for one cast member for a show. Yes. Oh. Nobody, nobody took me up on it. No, nope, nobody's no taking you up yeah. on it yet. A, I said I would. I would sell one of our one of our opinions for a hundred dollars for one show. Yeah. That's a hefty margin. Yeah. I mean, I it's still available. This yeah. much influence costs something. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but all right, we have anything else before we get into geistoid? Mm, I'm roids. I like the roids. Right. I'm a big fan of them. Um, and they're cool. So very, very cool. Very, Dexy. very cool. The art is probably the best art we've seen thus far. Yes, there are art on Ooh. these cards, Z. Ooh, interesting. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, uh, it's good, good but that's okay. So you okay. like that style? You like this guy's toy style? I, I like this kind of like. I wish it was less cartoony, but I do like the whole like kind of grim dark style. I like the flavor of the house, right? Kind of mm-hmm. the you know the whole grim reaper, very uh what a uh mysterious, right? Like kinda animated junk, right? Dan- like, danger kind of, looming, yeah. kind of like that whole mm. thing. But let's start with a strong. Aren't feeling. these just Jawas? No, oh, no. some of them. Yeah, I mean, some like- of them. Change the hoodie to brown. A little bit. And all these things are Jawas, man. I guess Jawas eyes are red. I guess I also know Jawas eyes are yellow. Um, Orange, maybe. But I would need to see one of these next to a normal creature to determine whether it's Jawa sized or not. My assumption is they're not. What is a Jawa? Oh my God. Have you never seen Star Wars ever? Exiled. Exiled. (laughs) Unforgivable sin. Hope you have an ancient guardian. (laughs) I still Star Wars, know. The Mandalorian, oh, yeah, yeah. uh, Kenobi, any... No? Oh, we did see The Mandalorian. Yeah, there's Jawas in there. Quite a number what of them, if I remember. Is it? They're little sand people. But the dudes that look like just like these cards. Yeah, That's there we go. Brown. Somebody just, somebody just uh, got a gif in there. Okay, all right. Yeah, I've never seen Jawas with red eyes. They're normally red like eyes yellow there. or orange. No, it's but I'm yellow. totally down with pro- this. Also, kind of looks like the wizard from the early Final Fantasies. I see that. I that I agree with as well because it 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 does. Like especially the BR guys card. Like yeah. that is that picture. Yeah. But let's yeah, get that, into the, the cards. Eyes really have that look. So we don't have another two hour episode, and Ryan's exhausted in the morning. I mean, Help oh, Feature Stealth I mean, just had like a two hour episode, is... so that means we have to go four hours, right? Oh, this my is going to be yeah. the longest one. Welcome, guys. All these cards are new. Yep, they are. That's true. Yeah. So, a strong right, feeling. Ready each friendly creature with ember on it. Move one ember from each friendly creature to the common supply. Rare. It is rare. rare. Yeah. It is dual sided. So, I think this is. Oh, no, in it's certain not decks. I, I lied. It's very good. not dual sided. No, it says friendly. No, it says friendly. No. My bad. I just read the card. Tells me what the card does. But but yeah, even that's very good, but often yeah. less good. Go ahead. Go ahead, you walk. No, I, I there's two different components here. Ready each friendly creature. So you're getting that and then move with one. amber on it. Yes, but that's what Geistoid is doing as a there's whole. There's a fair bit of capture see. in, in, and, in and, that. and so I, I think it's a very, very nice rare. Yeah, this seems solid. I like like a rare. Amber yeah. burn. You're burning the amber mm-hmm. that they want yep. to get back. And, and you, get you to might do get ready. Like, like, this card is strong. I got a strong feeling about this card. I got a strong feeling. It's Excuse me. I got no four way. on this. No way. Five. I got four. This is a five. I, I mean, there's a lot of decks where it doesn't do much, but but the decks where it does a lot, uh, it's going to well, be this really is, good. This is almost chase quality. You think? See? This is good. I do have this as a chase card. Um, 
There are yeah. some Geistoid pods that come in light on capture, but most of them come in really strong for capture. Um, and the fact that you're crushing a ton of amber while readying a lot of guys, a lot of these guys have really good abilities. Like this is a, this yeah, is a yeah. I can win games because of this card card. So I put it at a six. Ooh, okay. Yes, it's going to be underwhelming in a lot of decks, but there are going to be decks that like land the combo right. after their yeah. winds of death turn and are like GG. Let's get yeah. to an actual um, underwhelming card. <laughs> Ancestral Timekeeper. Six power, three armor, Spectre, clock. Oh, God. At the end of your turn, you're going to notice a theme with the clocks. Um, At the end of your turn, put a time counter on each friendly clock creature. <laughs> if there are 12 or more time counters on Ancestral Timekeeper, purge Ancestral Timekeeper. If you do, take another turn after this one. I feel like that should read, if you do, win the game. Forge three what? keys. I mean... <laughs> like us how bad like how what it takes to do that? It's very unlikely to trick. Twelve well, right? twelve twelve time counters. Do any it, of the other clocks give time counters? It should have at least counters? been a key cheat. I agree. Like yeah, it should have some. like if you do forge a key. Twelve though, with all the splash damage, all the stuff, all that, this, that, everything else. Like it literally should have just said win the game. No, they do not <laughs> need to put in a win yeah, the game don't, card. No, yeah, don't no. do that. Why? Because uh, this thing's never going to trigger. That That well, is not true. Never, it's never, never going to trigger. It's going to trigger. Anyways. It's going to trigger. You're going to end up playing someone that sucks at the game, and it'll <laughs> trigger against them. <laughs> like, <laughs> tw 12 time counters. 12. So... Uh, so I, there you, is yes, but you haven't looked at the rest of the cards that put more time counters. No, on No, I know yeah. there's other things, but like, uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, like I said, this I agree. This is underwhelming, but this is a stupid chase card that people are already asking for clock decks. People yes. want it, clock decks because it's the new jank combo. Maybe, maybe there well, will be I'm an showing up to that event. Thing, Please bring but these kinds of decks to play against me. Yes, please bring. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I think it's a fun component for the set, as you said. A lot of people are searching for it. I don't think it's competitive, but I think that it can be entertaining. They got another spot on Help for Future Self. They like fun cards over there. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that, that that's all that you're looking at. It's it's not game winning in my opinion. No. <laughs> I appreciate fun cards. Come on. So I'm gonna guess Do you this is like a three. This time well, this uh, what, what's not as much as some of the other fun cards. This thing probably <laughs> still gets a three in the Z score because number one, it's a creature no, that probably it's a creature that probably yeah, is gonna reap been, and it can reaped. kill Briarzark. He he might even be a four just because a six three is a significant fathead. Not a four, but that I mean, I guess I'm at three. Two. I, I yeah. would say two, but remember, it kills Bryozark, so it's bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> kills Bryozark. I forgot about kill Bryozark. Forgot about that. It That's survives. one of the checkboxes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and is it going to get the opportunity to read? That's another checkbox. So I mean, That's a he bare minimum also, three. if you look at the picture, he is shaking his clock booty. So that's um, but he also it, brings a, in other clocks. Yeah, it's a linked rarity, bringing it down. That's where I was going with it. Oh guys. yeah, linked rarity. So do we minus it one, one cuz it brings one, another clock? Zero? Is this so is it a two? Two. It's a fun card. People will be looking for We got for people clock in the decks, chat. Two. two, 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 two. Z. All right, so like Z score is two different systems. Like one is there to like rate things for their house value and their set value. And Seven. then the other is the Z score, the deck draw better cards. So, like, what the actual impact of the card does. So, like, One. if it hits your deck. If Timekeeper is in your deck, it means you've already drawn it. It's, it's already there. Um, its value is a three. Its impact, as far as the set score goes, because it is one of the worst linked cards in the history, um, is a zero. So... Because if you get one, that means you at least have five of these pieces of crap in your in that pod, which means a third of your deck sucks. So even though it, they would all like cumulatively not be zero together, 
their net value on like the house as far as like the weights go is zero. So this card is a I said it, it's a three if it's in your deck in draw better cards. Okay. Its impact as far as the valuation of the Geisoid house is a zero. If I could have been willing to make it negative, I would have made it negative, but I did not do that. So I don't know a, if anybody, including your fellow podcasters, know what you're talking yeah, about when you say the, the the score impact to the house so, when it's three for, for as a card in the deck. Like, all of these scores were designed to be able to compare the value of a house across sets. Like, that was the entire origination. Oh, the, the, the big old spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. To see like which house is better than which house from set to set, um, all things equal, right? So like, this is a horrible card algorithmically, so it hurts the value of the Geisoid house in generating good decks. If it actually hits your deck, it is not nearly as horrible as like on a deck quantifiable basis. Most likely, that pod overall is still gonna suck though. Got it. So Got it. after all the confusion, let's move on to Animating Force. It is an upgrade. This upgrade enters play attached to an artifact instead of a creature. Play, take control of this artifact and put it on a flank of your battle line as a creature with four power and versatile. Scrap, gain one ember. So I, I got to go immediately over to Sheep. Sheep, what happens when we put an upgrade on an artifact, because he has been all over this one. Uh, so, current rules uh, upgrades fall off of artifacts. They just go to the discard. True story. Yeah. And why is that? Uh, because that's what the rule says. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Does it literally just say artifacts, upgrades fall off artifacts? Yeah. Yep. Something to that extent. So this doesn't card does, says doesn't this disc, golden, like doesn't do nothing? Does Is that golden what you're saying? Rule though. Well, no, you would still get control of it. like get everything control of it. happens, and then it just go like the actual up, like action goes to your discard pile. Yep. And so does the upgrade, or I'm sorry, no. the uh, the upgrade goes to your discard artifact pile still, and the artifact too, or does no, it return the to its owner? Stays wherever it goes. Yeah, so you're going to take control of the artifact. But it's on your side, but the actual upgrade I... goes away. So then what happens to the artifact when it doesn't have any power or toughness in my battle line? What happens to the artifact when it does the take control of the art, put it on the flank of your I You know what? Because once this, it loses this, the upgrade this is a card that needs an immediate FAQ. Is what yeah, I mean, means. clearly, clearly, this is, this, the intention this doesn't work with the rules. My assumption Atten is this would the intention rule, of what though. they're trying to do is clear, right? They're trying to mm -hmm. say you get that artifact, you put it on your battle line with this as an upgrade, and it's get it's four power and versatile, right? That's what they're trying to say. Um, yes. but it's just not yeah. how the rules are written. Fair, I guess. So, yeah, what is this it, golden yeah. rule, or are we not? Um, so, well, yes, maybe, but Golden Rule is already a thing that doesn't have good meaning, right? To say something Golden Rules is just weird. Like, Golden Rule is like, you can ignore everything, but ignoring well, no, it rules just as written a, is It bad. just says if a card tells you to do something Yeah, but there's already the cards rules. that that there are up but it's the whole upgrades attached to animated creatures, but then they fall off when they become artifacts. That's what it says. Like, there's nothing that says you can't end up attaching them. It says upgrades fall off of artifacts. So you can attach it. The golden then do I attach just, it. Then do I just have a, a artifact in my battle line? And it's a creature in this case. But it's a creature it's not, for but power it has versatile. But once it loses, which I the think is cool, once right? Because now it has versatile. So if that artifact has a some sort of use ability in action, right? This uh, isn't the one it. that I have a problem with, sheep. I think this just stays yeah, on. It's a creature. Uh, I think you're thinking of poltergeistoids. Oh, you you are right because it becomes a creature. But when it yeah. goes back, 
Sorry, yes, I'm thinking of poltergeist sides, but I'm also trying to play my ABR game now too. Oh my also, god! Oh, um, gosh. But if, so wait, did you just make a stick right. about this card and it's actually yeah, fine? Yes, it did. And then this, this guy enters Listen, the play. At sheep sheep. making a great well, pace. So uh-huh. this is a thing though. It attaches to the artifact and then makes it a creature. There yeah. is a non-existent timing window in this game, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I uh, so there it might be problematic. It's a but, little it's a little weird, but it's not our main issue. Yeah, so, I, I like this because it's it's either a steal or it's often a, a destroy. Because you could, if you're like, I just want this jar off the board, you could immediately yes. fight with it and yes. often and and kill it. So this is pretty cool. Or, and if you don't have any artifacts, you could still scrap it for one ember. I was going to say, or if all this is too confusing for you, discard it for an ember because it does scrap for gain one ember. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Let's move to Albia Stray. If you're haunted, Albia Stray enters play ready. After reap, capture round. It's a six power specter creature vehicle. And it's a common. Did we say a score, by the way, for animating force? Oh, we didn't. Uh, I'm... Don't even know what four. to do with this. Three? Four. At four. least four. Uh, Z? Dude, this is cards of six. It's a six. Oh, enemy force is six? You take Wait, artifact... away an enemy artifact from yeah. play, turn it into a creature, which means it can kill stupid yeah. things like Jar, Heart of the Forest. And it has a scrap effect of gain one. Weird this story. Is the it actually only card that... in the game that has a scrap effect where you gain an amber. Did you see that pretty line good. of text on there? It says cannot be attached. To right, I'll go five. Forest. I'll go five. He said it was a six already. What do you mean you're going five? You already just said it was a six. Well, he's uh, uh, he's uh, changing his, his his number now. Oh, now I'm you're changing there. the number now that you know the number. Got it. Makes sense. Exactly. Uh, right. But yeah, Albia Albia Stray, is Stray, every day of the week. After reap, capture one. Four. Vroom. It's a big body. It's a big body. It kills Bryo. It captures. Often ready. entering play ready. Good. If you're on yes. it, yeah. So it's at least five? a three. I want to give it like a, a three. five. It's a four. I want to give it a five because I like it. Four. <laughs> it's very confident. Uh, it is a four. There's a four. All right. Okay. Yep. Be our geist. Action card. Get a pip of ember every time you play it. Play. Choose a creature in any haunted player's discard pile. Play that creature as if it were in your hand. And this is common again. Heck yeah. I love That's this card. So, so good. good. Six. This is like. Ah, this isn't a six, but it's a so good. four or five area card. I'm, I'm giving it a five. Where, wait, where are we at? We we already on Be Your Geist? Yeah, we're at yep. Be Your Geist. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, that's probably a six Chasey card. That thing's... <laughs> yeah. Not I six, mean, you could have, like... Six. You, you could have three of these in your deck and just, like, play all the best creatures from yours and your opponent's discard piles. Like... I have two in my name deck, and it is super fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you, it, It's a little sad, again, if you're not haunted either player, but overall, the huge upswing. Amber Pip, you're going ahead and being able to play. I so can't wait to no, steal an Infernus with one of these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I just, there you go. I'm just licking my chops to be able to do that. it says play that creature. Yep. yep it does take- it's not enter play. I play that creature. Yeah. I got it at a six. I could see it totally being a six. but I, I currently I'm, have it at a five. I was say, I'm going, I, I originally said five, but if you yeah, said I thought, six, yeah, I would I not be surprised. Is it just because of the haunted aspect? It's. I just don't have it as, at like chase level. Like I don't think okay. you're entirely. So your in six is your chase level. This. Yeah. Okay. Um, stuff like that, like stuff that is going to, in and of itself, sometimes just win the game. And I don't think it's quite there. It's it's pretty damn close. Like it is definitely a, a five. If no, I can see that, I start seeing decks that just run out three or four of these things, and it's just brutally over. Like that might change, but um, well, the... Ewok's deck has two, and it gets irritating. It is real good. Gets I real used irritating. It last Sunday to help prevent my opponent from being haunted. <laughs> oh, was so like like I was moving them from haunted to not haunted with it. 
Um, that was pretty cool. All right, let's go on to Boiler. Two power, four armor, Spectre robot. Weird story. Um, there's a certain Star Alliance card that gets back robots. These are a lot yeah. of these guys are robots. Um, destroyed. Yep. Deal six damage to an enemy creature or enemy flank creature. Scrap to each to, to each, each enemy, enemy flank, flank creature. Thank you, thank yeah. you. And then uh, scrap deal one damage to uh to each enemy creature. So one across the board or six to the flank. Funny thing is that's actually a whistling dart. Like it does. Yep. Yeah. Whistling darts is its crap effect. But yeah. I think whistling Without darts at least had a number. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it can over... be a little tricky to tri trigger with four armor when you want to. Um, it doesn't kill it's... Bryo. It's nope. it seems mid. Well, I guess unless Bryo is a flank creature. It's Bryo's always a flank creature. <laughs> right. So I guess it does kill Bryo. <laughs> it's a 17. <laughs> okay, so I guess I guess I play a I play an action card. Which would because of Bryo says, what does Bryo say? It has to instead you kills their leftmost creature. Leftmost flank creature. So if you play him on the keep him on the left, play an action card, kill him to kill Bryo. That's a uh, two for one. Work. It still feels it bad. It doesn't work. That's your no. side wrong. Yeah. It kills your opponent's left, not your own. If I played action card, doesn't it kill it my? Would play their left. Oh, their. Kill theirs. This is a three. This is a solid. I, I think it's a three because that two four with a four armor, it should stick around to be able to get a couple of reaps. So I want to give it a two. I'm not overly excited to see him. Seems fine, but it's fine. It's not amazing, but it's it, it's solid. He's higher than a two. Mm -hmm. So you're going three as well. Sure. All right, Z. What do we got? Uh, yeah, I have it right out of three. I mean, I think the scrap effect is good with discard pips, and if you land them, you're probably either killing something. Well, I mean, you're killing something if you land them. Most likely, you'll get a reap. All right. Uh, let's move into Boo. Pip of Ember, every time you play it, it's an action play. Discard the top 10 cards of a player's deck. Which, common. yeah, common. <clears throat> I mean, auto, this one... Auto-haunted. Yeah, auto-haunt. Like, I did not really know what to think of this card coming into the set. It's like, is that good? Is that not good? Like, but it has proven to me, at least, to be pretty darn good in good yeah. decks that want to be haunted and do haunted stuff. And well, you mean every even most you know, decks your set. opponent's draw deck. Well, you know, and here's a weird thing. Boo also combos with a uh, certain certain well combos with Ecto Charge, but it also combos nicely with uh, rejuven is it rejuvenating showers? All sorts of stuff that interact with your yeah, discard with your pile. graveyard. So it's invigorating shower. Invigorating, invigorating shower. Thank you. Um, yeah. it combos I, a lot I with a lot of cards in set. I've gotten a lot of use out of this common card. Um, Boo, especially early on, loves to be able to move Geistoid to its sweet spots. Um, there is a nice play where you're playing Boo actually because it does not specify. It says discard the top cards of a player's deck. You can actually choose your opponent to unhaunt them if you're playing in sets or potentially go ahead and just discard cards to gain card knowledge from uh, a set if you're going to interact with that. Or maybe so you I, want I have, to be our geist them. But I'm saying like there there has been some benefits of not just playing it on yourself, and it does have some flexibility there. Um, it, it's a nice card overall. It's a little bit sadder to see later on. Um, that, that's just where I've personally seen it. Four. Three. Cheap. Whatever. Okay. Seems fair. Yeah. I, I, I'm at that 3-4 range. Um, I could be talked into either. I think that it's a little bit above your average card, but it has some drawbacks. So probably a 4. All right. What do we got, Z? So this one, I think, has had the most movement on Guy Soys. Originally, I had it at a 2. And then I played some games, and then I moved to a 3. And then I saw just how, I mean, how frequently... Ecto Charge was being printed at that like 
like that common ISO one, like like autoencoder was common and ISO one. But again, this is just sample size, and most likely I'm being subject to the sample bias here. But I feel like Ecto Charge is in like every damn guy's sword deck. I finally like pulled an Ecto Charge deck, everybody. I just <laughs> yeah, want to say, you, oh, even yeah, the Loki has did. one now. I now yeah, have so, one. We'll get into that story once we get to Ecto Charge. With the oh. frequency that I have been seeing Ecto Charge, currently I have Boo at a four, just because it like auto haunts you. Obviously, you all talked about that, but it also like because as soon as you get eighteen cards in your discard pile, Ecto Charge is the same value as Key Charge. Like yep. Boo plus Ecto Charge is real, real, real good. It's very, very, very good. Five out of four because four. of just things it does. Fair enough. Call of Need. Pip of Ember every time you play it. Play. Search your deck for a card and discard it. Yeah. This. When I first read this card, I was like, what? <laughs> Why would you ever want to do that? And the pen and... seed. Well, yeah, recursion. there's recursion. Yeah, in there there's so much. There's a lot of and recursion like, from the discard pile. This combos so much, right? Go through your deck, find the card you want, put it yeah. in your discard pile to then, you know, you have to have with other stuff to put it wherever you want, kind of like probably, put it in your archive, put probably, it in your hand, play prob- it like play, probably play it. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different different options uh, for those cards in your discard and. Yes, it needs the combo, but um, you know, I, I was uh, I was telling you guys like my uh, slow walk slow deck uh, makes me play slow because there's so many decisions in it. This is one of them. It's like, wait, which of these other good cards am I going to go put in my discard, and then I'm going to archive it, or am I going to play it, or am I going to put it in my hand, like all that? So, slow walk slow makes me play slow. Uh, it also gives I give this you a the four. opportunity to thin your deck. Yep. See, see, as you're playing slow here i got the yep. original slow walk and man mm-hmm. that deck sings it, it flies so i, I love it mm-hmm. no I, I enjoy i enjoy the searching uh searching your deck for a card being able to pull out any card that's that is huge uh it really is um it's a little bit of a bummer that you got to Go ahead and combo it in order to be able to pull it back. But well, there's but a lot that's that saying you want to play there's that card. Lot. There are also cards you just never want to see in certain matchups. So maybe you get rid of it. Yeah, Thin I mean it's at a rare sure slot. You're not so pulling you a dead card. I don't know. Like it's see, it, for me, it's a three. Everybody else, nobody else, just yeah. me. The no, four. I'm four. 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 Yeah. Ewok. I'm going to put it at a three. Three? I think the Amber is good. I think the rare slots and the need for something else. I think Boo at a four has more more flexibility. I think Call of Needs a three. And Sheeps whatever. So Z, what do we got? I got a three right in, three. The, in the middle, kind of. Like it, yeah. everything else, said, it's a three. Seems fair. All right, let's go into Chronometer. Chronometer? Chronometer, four oh, power, awesome. two ember, yes. or four, yes. ember, either. four power, another clock. Yeah, four power, two armor, clock. At the end of your turn, put a time counter on each friendly clock, clock creature. If there are six or more time counters on chronometer, destroy chronometer. If you do, purge a card from a discard pile. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a him lot of work for simply purging a card from a discard pile. I'm pretty sure in Furnace does more than that for a lot less. Like, and it's a body that, body that reaps that most likely sticks there because you don't want them to ever get it back, ever, ever. So the longer it's in the discard, sometimes the better, depending on whether they have uh, exhumes or not. Or any, you know, disc recursion. Is this a zero, Z? It's a one. It's a one? I mean, it's a 4 2, right? It's a 4 2. It should It's stay. a vanilla 4 2. A 4 2 creature with nothing else on it would still be a one. <laughs> All right, fine. Curse of Forgetfulness. It's an artifact, another one of the curses. It has treachery, so it enters under your opponent's control. 
At the end of your turn, purge the top card in your discard pile. Thoughts on this? At a rare slot. I, I dig the curses. Did you forget. N- nice, Draz. <laughs> I dig them. I do, too. Some that are um, better than others. Um, Boy, I never want to play this against you. Because I feel like your 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 timing and sequencing would get even crazier. Mm-hmm. This card was real good when I played it. It just just a rump does me. a does a lot of disruption, causes haunting to be much harder to do. Mm-hmm. It's it's just it's it's definitely very good against um other grim reminders decks. There is the potential through some craftiness of play against some older style decks, it could cause them to speed up if they're a shuffling deck, because every turn they have some amount of ability to purge a card, which is a little bit a little bit like um what's the disc the big disc guy? Greater Octet. It's a little bit like Greater Octet, where mm-hmm. every turn you get to to some extent, you have a choice of what you're setting. Sometimes you're going to have to get rid of a good card, but often you can finagle well, things to have card, a yeah. less desirable card. And out of set, I don't know if this is as great of a card to play against a high F deck. In set, is pretty damn solid. Yeah, it does seem kind of matchup dependent. I, I agree. Still don't know if you ever don't play it, though. I think you always play this card. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you'd have to, it, it, that'd be a big brain play to see, I, like, oh, yeah, my opponent's gonna be able to take better advantage of this. I um, don't know if I'd want to play it against Nova. Well, and again, it's, 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 it's consistently, it's every <laughs> turn. I mean, that's, that's a lot to be able to well, go ahead there's and manage. A lo- and there's just some again, things you can't control. Those greater octet if you land. I know, but. I'm saying I think overall it's going to go ahead and certain players, you're going to have a 60-40 advantage for that player. But I think that's at best. I really think that most of the time this is going to play out well. It's it's at least a three. I'm not, I don't know. Do you go four on this or three? I think it's just a three. Maybe it's a a five. Z. Uh, I literally only think this is playable against other Grim Miners decks. I have this set of two. Mm. Like, y'all, like Dan started to hint on this, but like, imagine any set outside of Grim Reminders. If you could choose a card to purge from your deck at the end of every turn, right? Like, if you're a Coda deck, pretty much any competitive Coda deck, you can make it so the, like, you're ending the game with all of, like, four routine jobs. Like, that's what's left. Like, that kind of thing. Mm. Just to be able to or you've already it. played all your shadows for steals, but now you just yeah. purge them out and like Because Dan referenced, like, you can only really do this as a high-efficiency deck, but, like, you could basically, like, not play that creature that doesn't really do anything, and that's your discard at the end of your turn. You're in a bad penny. You draw, you draw up, you purge that creature out. You cycle your deck. And if like, you know, by yeah. second cycle, you're down three creatures. By you know, third cycle, if it's a high efficiency deck, you're down six creatures. Like, there's a lot of decks that are still in the meta. Like, if if somebody played this and I'm playing Pink Jacket, like, thank you. Like, uh, and I it's... think I do better with fraud with this. Yeah, like this improves fraud. This improves this improves a lot of high efficiency decks that are not Ingram reminders by a lot. So do people still play them? Maybe. I, I, I think this is just one of those cards that's gonna get played way more often than it should. Like hmm. Forum of Giants. You're right. Yeah. Well yeah, Forum of Giants is junk though. So is this. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're we're going into more artifacts. Curse Tomb, Pip of Ember every time you play it. Each creature with no ember on it gains destroyed. Purge this creature. If there are no creatures in play, purge Curse Tomb. 
As enhancements. Well, double yeah, capture enhancements. discard. And an amber pip. Yep. Uh this is another card I've played and I because I've been playing sealed games and we often play them blind for the silly fun. Yeah. Like you you just play this card and then I regret my decision. <laughs> <laughs> it seems super dependent on what your deck's doing. And also and, on what your opponent's deck is doing. Yeah. Because I, I guess I back to with... what we were saying last time, maybe you want to purge your creatures, right? Like your opponent want, might want to purge their creatures, right? So, mm -hmm. well, it, it, again, it depends. Like, again, on a Coda deck, I don't need any of my critters. Yeah, please purge them. Please like... purge them so I can play more of my actions that say steal, <laughs> you know? I, I, I just... hear that, but yeah, if you're also facing MM or Worlds Collide, you know, you're going to go ahead and throw out your Infernus and it's purged. I think Geistoid as a whole will have a lot of capture. So I think the so problem that, is that I think MM is going to have enough capture pips in it somewhere along the way. I can't way. disagree with that, but I'm saying like it's an interesting proposition to be able to think about with offset um, how this is going to interact with it. Remember, Geistoid, overall, our ideal Geistoid is going to have quite a bit of capture. You know what set isn't hurt by this? AOA. DT. DT. Well, Purge them all. <laughs> I don't have a deck to play. Does that mean I win? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. If you can get rid of all 36 cards, you win. You win the game, including done. the tide. I'm telling you, done. The tide? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> done. Is that possible? You get, you do get a Chibo. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, oh, what, what do we got for like, uh, curse uh, tomb Four. because like this oh, messes yeah. with no, your VR guys. No, no, I'm like, sorry. I went the wrong way. I, I actually do have it at four for reasons that oh. weren't discussed. It this card has, well, it has two that has three enhancements. Yeah, it yeah, has three that, that is as long. It's got an amber pip on itself, two capture pips, which you actually do need a lot of capture to have really good guys to wait, and a discard pip. And then the way I actually play the card in most games, which there's one more thing I want to talk about, but like most games that I play this, I play Winds of Death, clear the board, then I play Curse Tomb, get the amber, and let it purge itself. Because it purges mm. itself. Mm. It gets itself out of your cycle. Um, uh, I think one game I actually played it as my first card in the game. It purged. Um, the other thing is there are decks out there that have a lot of destroyed triggers on your like that you face on your opponent. Um, if you oh, choose okay. purge yeah. first, mm -hmm. they won't get their other trigger. Mm -hmm. So like if they have a bunch of dust dumps, you could play curse to them, winds of death, nothing triggers. Make them purge first. Mm, so that's yeah. the thing. So it has a yeah, utility. I, I, I just have a hard itself. time giving it more than a three. But you know what I yes. heard right there? Does anybody want to know what? what I heard? I just heard a Lokarian combo. <laughs> no, I mean it, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming a lot of destroyed effects out there, though. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I mean uh, the whole like, all of MM. I play Winds like, of Death. That I play like you. You also got to have Winds of Death. Remember. Also I'm telling I'm That's telling you the amber printed on it, the two capture and the discard makes it more valuable than just yeah. a straight three. Yeah. All right. Next card. All right. Dark Memento. Dark Memento. I love this card and I know it's not going to get the get anything. But at the start of your turn, if you are not haunted, discard cards from the top of your deck until you are haunted. Oh, you get a pip of ember every time you play it, by the way. Scrap, discard the Every top. time I play it, not just sometimes. Every time you play it. Every not time. Some... That would be mm -hmm. weird if there was like phasing ember. Oh, I shouldn't give anybody ideas. That'd be a terrible thing. Only well, um, on odd numbered turns. <laughs> right. Yeah, only on odd numbered turns that end in Y. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> scrap, scrap, discard the top card from a player's deck. If that car, if that player is not haunted, repeat this effect. Didn't you say you're trademarking this, Wookie? That you're really tired of giving others information that they use? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably going to be in like, I don't know, two sets from now. Um, I like I mean, this, this card. Yeah, it's auto haunt. It is an right. auto haunt every time. No matter what I do, I am haunted. Period. Yeah, of you story. can't not be haunted. Now it's <laughs> now, but I, I also come to the fact that like discard pips are a thing. And this set is not incredible. Some decks struggle to get there, but the 
decent decks don't seem to struggle to get haunted. This is a card that like seems like it's fine as long as you're not combo focused and you're just generally a high value deck that has haunted effects. This card's great, right? Like it seems good to me until somebody comes and keeps infernacing you every turn. Yeah. I mean, but that's, you know, I mean, Infernus yeah. is just good against yeah. a set, too. Don't forget. Yeah, and there's all there is also like we just we we just said we liked Boo, right? Which gets you to haunted, but there are scenarios under which you're like, wait, I'm I'm not going to play Boo because my opponent has a Tanjumanji and is gonna increase my key costs if I get haunted. I mean, um, you play this card and you will never forge a key again against Dark Heart. Hmm. Yeah? yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so you've listed literally Tangimanji and Dark Heart, the two cards that will have a negative impact on it. Way to go, guys! Well, well I mean, but I, I, otherwise, it might not be good. Otherwise, and, it's auto boo. Furnace. Yeah, we said boo was good. Yeah. So in, in this set, we are trying to get haunted most of the time. This is really, really good. You have haunted house and other things that have huge benefit for being able to be haunted. I okay. think that there's a lot more positive for being on. So yeah. here's, I, I think it's a four. I still here's keep it four. your Locarian combo is mm. Dark Memento. Okay. Followed by Animating Forcing It. And okay. then you're also playing on Tamed. So you have Dark Heart and then you have that card that is that no, that's you have to have Equidon. The card that is after you forge a key, give them the most powerful creature. And some way you give them your dark memento and you have dark heart of the forest. Somehow, somehow you're going to give them that. Well, thanks game thanks that for wasting ends. my night there, sheep. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. I'm going to call it out. Thank you. So if you have oh. any of these combos, please let me know, because I would love the game that never ends. Um, what's dark memento, Etsy? Where, where do you get it? Oh, I I have it at a three. Three. It's a little bit delayed as far as the boo effect. If you just wanted to fire from hand, the scrap can do the boo effect, but that is not an amber. So, no, I have it like one lower than boo. Um, That seems fair. It's it's real close though. Yeah, yeah. I I it is slightly less than boo. I I agree. All right, next card, Dark Lamp. Here's a four-power Spectre Robot. Each friendly creature with Ember on it gains Elusive. Play, capture one. This is um, better. Once again, in this house, no, it's not in this house, but in the set, here's just a better version of an MM card. So the yep. MM card was what? Three power and Boss like... Boss Zarek. Yep. Yeah. Each power with... An- or each- he, has, he has three enhanced capture, though. Right. And this has play capture. They're very similar. I guess similar. three and half. Yeah. Are, They're basically probably. equal. But he was a mutant in a mutant set. That was another yeah. thing. Yeah. So, I, and this is a specter in a specter house. So, like, robot. It's I mean, pretty like, good. Like, this card's pretty, pretty good. It's um, that middle line, three, four area. Yeah, three. He, he uh-huh. does stuff. Yeah. You're capturing lots of amber. Having your guys have elusive is pretty good until they then get to fight forever with their stupid brick nasties. Because everything is elusive. Why is Fight Forever not a card name? Never mind. Fight to um, the end? Well, no, no. Um, it's got to be Fight Forever. We're all wrong. Well, well, we're not all. But a lot of us okay. in the community are wrestling nerds. We've all been to a match where they're chanting Fight Forever. That's neither here nor there. Back on task. Dark Clamp, go. Fight to the end should have been named Fight Forever. There you go. And Fight to the end should kill the creature because it fights until its end. But, you know, mm-hmm. semantic. Lost opportunities. That's all I'm saying. Missed opportunities. Hey, I like him. Where's Dark Lamp? Four. I'm putting him at his power. Four. <laughs> He's a three. I have another three. Okay. Fair enough. I dig him. Dymo. The Elder Gas. There's no the, just Dymo Elder Gas. Three power, two armor, Spectre Robot. Enhanced Capture Capture. Each friendly creature with ember on it gains destroyed. If you are haunted, gain one for each ember on this creature. 
What's uh what's the Star Wars robot guy who steals all the lightsabers? Uh General Grievous. General it Grievous. definitely looks like him. Oh yeah, it does, yeah. With all okay. of the Swiss army knife yada yada. So this is that, and then destroyed if you're haunted, gain one for each amber on this creature. This card is a game winner. Yeah. Can be an absolutely be. goofy game winner. In the right deck, yes. Yeah, this is pretty crazy though. Yeah. I mean, there's there's this with the guy that captures all their amber if you're haunted, and then Twi- you know, it you know something else, and yep. boom, you yep. I get all your amber too, sort of. It's we yeah, were playing good. sealed this weekend, and I definitely got br geisted by the guy who captured all the amber, and then Dymo ended up getting played in Winds of Death, yada yada. Yeah, no, it was brutal. Yeah. Look at your opponent's deck list, everybody. And two capture pips. Yum yeah. yum. So, um, yeah. I I, I like, want to say like a... four or five, maybe. I want to say six, but I know it's not, so I'm going to go with five. Like, it's the only downside of this is if uh, you're playing against like a TMTP or IG deck. Yeah. And you just, you know, don't want to set up where they can make you have 10 billion amber. Well, I mean, at that point, then you don't right i mean right. you're you you're in control him. you're in control of this well you can still play them but just you're not gonna go for high ember you know push. no they they destroy your board therefore pushing your amber total real oh high. see, and i'm then... thinking more of this guy i'm gonna maybe wins a death it i'm gonna somehow kill him on play i'm gonna play him and then somehow kill him in that turn yeah, to certainly. make sure i i'm in control of when i'm gaining that ember all yes, right, you that's talk what to you're going to do if you have it. I'm you, talking about how your opponent can abuse this card, which is where its score goes down. Yep, uh, so now I'm down, back down to a four. I don't think that. I think it's still pretty hot fives. I guess multiples of this is yeah, works, they spin, right? They Doubles up. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you can trigger multiple destroyed effects. Pretty good. All right, yeah. back up okay. to a five. I, I, I'll, I'll go five. I, yeah, I just think I don't have Actually, anything with this yet that's amazing. But kind but of I like this like mm-hmm. in thoughts of multiples of them, but smaller amber capture. So, like, I have a couple of guys with one amber on them. So when they die, I gain two when you get two. one back. That's mm-hmm. probably overall more effective than the giant swing because you can't do that and be behind on key. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm back up to a five at the current time. <laughs> I've I've had I've had a lot of hills and valleys with this card, so let's just find out. Uh, I've got him at a five, but he scales. So like, if the second Dymo in your deck would be a six, and the third Dymo in your deck would be an eight. Oh wow! An eight. The scale only goes to six. You broke the scale. No, like. And I'm just giving you. I You're getting bonuses for having yeah, synergies that we shit. don't really account for. We just don't call them synergies. We call them bonuses. That way yep. we can. That way we can tax you more heavily on them later. Mm-hmm. Okay, Echo Fly. <laughs> Echo Fly. Two power, one armor, Spectre robot action. Return an action card from your discard pile to your hand. Scrap. Archive the topmost action card from your discard pile. Does this get scrapped more than played? Yep. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Uh, I don't think this gets played. Yeah, I mean... I mean, unless you can immediately put an amber on it and then ready it with that other card. Sure. And then two of these, some way to capture... There was? Two, is there not a Two way? of these. Two of these and that card that lets you ready uh, um things and you have amber on them. That's some kind of rule of six junk. Mm-hmm. If you have a strong feeling with a capture pip, this will rule of six. Okay, that would be a way to do it. And capture six amber. Um, yeah. I still think scrap archive the top. Well, just, it would destroy six amber. So. Huh. Question. Oh, no. So does a scrap trigger before I, I discard this card? It's no, after he is, the in, the is in the discard pile, it which is why this that's one why actually, it's an action card, and also actually says top most. Oh, top most action because you have to go digging. Right. 
Because they could have had this, like, archive the top action card, but that doesn't actually ever exist because this guy will always be the top card. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I still like the ability of recursion. I don't like the yellow eyes on the guy. But he's an echo fly. No, no, no. Not the fly. The dude in the lower left. Oh, the dude? Or the chick. I don't know or what the, they what whatever, whatever I don't know prefer. what what it is like what 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 part of lore is that person and in... I'm gonna go with a shadow elf because why Whoa. not um I just don't uh, like the eyes does it have ears I don't know uh those look kind of like a shadow elf yeah back to focus ah it's just I like the ability so much it just yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a great way to seems... archive your Ecto Charge for the right time, right? Yeah. Or your have charge, your Winds of Death right yeah. back. Or yeah. any good card, and this house has lots of them. Yeah. So this has got to be a 5-6 area, because this is just silly. 5? I don't know if I can give it a 6. I don't think it's 6. 4. 5? Right. Mm. 4? Give us a number. Uh, 4. 4. 4. Four it is. Fantastic. All right. The card we've all been waiting for, Ecto Charge. Action card. Pip of Ember every time you play it. Forge a key at plus 20 Ember. Current cost. Reduced by one Ember for each card in your discard pile. If you do, purge Ecto Charge. Can I say this card at common? You ruined my night Tuesday. <laughs> 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 so here, here's the ecto charge story from Tuesday, and I'm probably gonna post the video. So I got, <laughs> I got, a video. yeah, no, oh, yeah, I, we, I we recorded it from Tuesday. this weekend. So I got into a situation, right, where I'm like, I think I can win the game. So I inv ecto charge is in my discard pile, but I have what is it? Invigorating showers. Uh -huh. And I have a junk restoration in my hand. And just with the number of cards, what I'm going to draw, because I actually don't want to flip my deck at this point, with what's still left in my discard pile, plus the junk restoration, there's two junk restorations in the deck. The chances of me draw, because I'm going to go down to two, so I'm going to draw four. I think I'm down to either like nine. It was five. Well, there Five was at the end. Yeah, there was yeah. more before then, but right. But yeah. like it's so, the moral. So in my deck, there's there's maybe nine cards, right? So with two junk restorations, I should easily be able to find the Ecto Charge and win the game. Um, This is for third key. So what card did you play that made me discard the bottom card of my deck? I don't know. I, I had a card that uh, allowed the discard. It was amazing because Ecto Charge went off. A lot of shouts and joy. We got yeah. everyone's attention from those magic players. And then. So then he makes me night. discard the bottom card of my deck, which it happens to be Ecto Charge. But I totally forgot. And I thought at that point I had lost the game until I remembered a card that I played earlier in the game called Well of Memory, which allows me to purge any number of cards from my hand to go get a card from my discard pile. Which happened to be Ecto Charge. So Junk Restoration, Junk Restoration. I don't need any of them. Go get my Ecto Charge, Ecto Charge for third key. I there love you. There is some recursion in Geistoids that is, oh, yeah. is. There, super there. ridiculous. Yep. Anyways, Ecto Charge is clearly a high thing. I have actually found, though, that it is it is definitely not 100%. You just get a key. No. It comes up early, and you don't have a way to deal with it. Like It's just in, it's in the average number. deck, it's Still a good card for sure, but it's not like this. Like, oh, they have an ecto charge, so we're only playing till two keys. It doesn't really work that way. I mean, it's close uh, in good decks. Uh, so what you're decks, saying is it's a six. Yeah, yeah. It's, you're saying it's only a six. It's only a six. Only like a six. Infinity. It, 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 yeah. Well, I did it, hear something in your rambling sheep. Sheep, you should be holding this card. Can't hold this card when you draw it in the first five or six cards. Yes, you can. No, you can't. <laughs> All right. You can continue to do that. 
That's you fine. you cannot do that in sealed decks that don't win the game, probably anyways. Mm, it's Echo still... Charge is... It's a third of your win condition. Yes. <laughs> it's a third of your turns. So the, the real the real question comes, what else is in your deck for you to be able to recur cards? It... And what does your opponent have that can go ahead and purge your discarded cards? You and go if... ahead and hold Echo Charge and seal, then see if yeah. it... Uh, I, I think that most of the time it's going to have to be a play for the Amber or your discard. Like, I just think that you're playing it for the Amber and you're not gaining anything else off of it. Depends. But, do I have them in that? I, I think you'll need to do some, like, math on that. No. Get, get back to me. Um, no, okay. I don't think I don't think that's that going ahead and holding it is going to go ahead and play out. Playing like, you're one hurting less yourself. card Good. every turn means it's significantly longer until you get chained. And can let alone get to the point where Ecto Charge is going to forge. Okay. All right. So what you're saying is it's, it's a six. <laughs> yes, it's I have the same. Yeah. Yeah, we have it in a this six. This is the best key cheat in the game. It definitely puts cheat in the word cheat. Yeah. Um, played correctly, you're playing to two keys, and they are not um, most of the time. Isn't well, that everyone what I most see of our that, good... That isn't that what most of our good key cheats are doing? Is you play to two keys? Like, well, most no, of you don't even most, need the amber. Most is... key cheats in this game, you still have to use six amber to forge with. This makes it free. You know what the yeah. best kind of keys are in key forge? Free keys. Because, like, like I said, I said it earlier too. Like, once you hit eighteen cards in your discard, it is already as good as key charge. Yes, in that manner. Like, if you have if you have a boo, you're more more than halfway there. Yes, well, boo oh, is eleven. Yeah, for right. certain, and most in in any good deck that's going to have it, it's probably a key. I guess I haven't opened any good decks. Maybe that's my problem. That's that is a problem. Trust me, I did not like the set until the past two weeks where I opened something playable. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, carrying on. Let's go look at more good cards. M. F- Empathic Malice. I like the card name. Action card. Uh, enhance. Capture. Capture. Play. A friendly creature captures three. If you are haunted, put Empathic Malice on the bottom of your deck. Okay. This may not be that great card we were referring to. It still nope. has two capture pips, though. It does still have two mm. capture pips. Therefore, it's but, what? Three? But, oh, no. Four. This one's an action. So it's play, capture three. If you're haunted... You put it back at the bottom, which means you'll see you're it slightly the slower. End of the game. Yeah, it comes back around. I don't know. I I don't. I haven't played with this card to know if that's real meaningful. It's a rare. There is some world where, like, if you have a good Geistoid board, you can just play this card as your last card goes to the bottom dry and stay haunted forever and always be capturing three. Yeah. That's a thing. It is. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a thing. This is a card. I, I think Andy there over there. Yeah, that's right. It's a three. Yeah. yeah. So right maybe on. it's a... I've got it out of three. Yeah. All right. Most confusing card I've, I've come into in a while. Energy Vampirism. Pip of Ember. Every time you play it, play a creature captures one from its own side. For each Ember on that creature, deal one damage to a creature. I don't know why this is confusing. Well, because we still have not resolved whether I can split that damage up or I have to yeah, deal it all for one. each each amber on that creature. Do a damage to a creature. So each amber you look at it and then you do a damage. Back to a of coins. Yep. OK, this is this is a splitter. Yep. Because mm-hmm. I have asked you that question twice now and I've gotten two different answers from you. Now I am focused and listening. Oh, so before, so debatable, so debatable, so before it was just random ramblings. Now it's I'm focused. Yeah, because I was playing a game and I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. The so this was... is has an amber pip, slow steals one, and does damage. Like, all in all, this is a... Yes, please. A, a decent card. But it doesn't do a lot of anything. Now, if they have a capture a creature that already has a bunch of amber on it, you put one more on it and get to do a bunch of damage, potentially even killing that creature and then getting all that amber. Like, I don't know. This card is 
a solid. It seems like it should be a four instead of a three, but often it's just two amber, and two amber is only a two or a three in the Z-score, right? It's better than a standard three. It's a four. Z? Uh, yeah, I have it at a four. Um, mainly because you do have a lot of like this is potentially a lot of damage against some decks, especially in set, right? Like, oh, there yeah. goes your trawler and all of its neighbors. I mean, that it probably happen. kills an Anthony. Oh yeah. Don't forget Trowley. about Anthony. Try oh, yeah, Trolley. Who's Anthony? Yeah. Anthony, the okay, guy who. Okay, so it's a four. It's good. It's uncommon. You might even get two of them in your deck. And now yep. we're gonna go to uh, the, the future card that... is past. Somehow, help from future self needs to be time. restricted. What? But but not this card. In, in Alliance, they kept Time Traveler restricted because of help from future self, which is half of this card. Yeah. I see yeah. where going. So swap I... each player's deck with their discard pile. Shuffle each player's deck. Um... So yeah. it's kind of like a re reverse time. No, I mean it's yeah, yeah, okay. It's re yeah, first time for both players without a pick. Yep. Uh, yeah. Without the uh, LA to do anything. No amber pips. Um, rare slot. Yeah, I don't know. Situationally interesting. Like this is one of those cards that this plus your ecto charge in hand on turn one is. Done. Yeah. So it's a three? Two. Two? I have it at a two. If after charge didn't exist, it would just be a one. Um, but yeah, it's just a two. Fair. Thankfully, Acto Charge is common, so it's a good chance when you have one, you have the other one. Right. Yeah. I've like but a lot of then, a lot of people have sent in alpha score decks and I see this combo. Like it is it's out that, there. You're gonna But be then there's also the math on the two cards being in your opening hand is yeah, not, it's not good. spectacular. But it's just the possibility existing is relevant competitively. Oh sure. It's yeah, I mean it's good. There's yeah. there's no question. But I don't I mean I think I'd rather have a higher value um a higher value card in my deck that doesn't just I mean, Most like, of the I'm time, I'd rather just have charge the end anyways for card three. I'd rather, yes, have something that provides more value here and just ecto charge for key three. Like Boo is a four because it is just that much better than this most of the time. Yeah. Um, uh, it, yeah. I would take a boo over this. Mm-hmm. Hollowed Eve Festival. Pip a member every time you play it. Action. Discard the top five cards of your deck for each guy's studied card. Discard it this way. A friendly creature captures one. Is this the most just mediocre? Like, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's fine, but you're not super excited. But the fact that getting you haunted early with this card yep. makes it a little better. Like... This just this just lives in the land of like I'm not sad to have it I'm not excited to have it mm, I'm a card uh, there like I've definitely recurred this card because it's the only amber control the deck has yeah it combos a lot with you if you have the right bots it's good but you do have to have the right bots yeah but this is it's only it's for fantastic yeah but you have to have your um. Other Geistwood cards in your deck or discard or whatever in your deck to be able to discard them to get that effect. Sure. Yeah. And you're always. Uh, it, it's if fine. You have five cards to discard, one, two, or three of them are most likely like, somewhere in that range you're capturing one. Yeah. I, one, like two. I said, this card is fine. Like, there's. I, yeah. uh, of of cards designed, like, this is fine. But that's yeah. all I can say about it. It doesn't get I mean, you excited. Yeah. It doesn't. It's just, it's just fine. Very average. Three average. Perfect. Harvest Skimmer. Five power Spectre Robot. After Reap, discard the top card of your deck. If it's a creature, gain one. Meh. 
This is whatever a five power generic creature is. Um, times Three. gain two, but often one. So I think a two. Three? Possibility of sometimes two, most of the time just the one gets you haunted faster. Three. Two. It is a big body at five. Meh. Two. Five uh, again. It looks, it looks like a um ten tengella, ting uh Tenga. Pokemon. Has all the ten ten has all the tentacles. Tentacruel. There you go. Thank you. Mm. Meh. I have it at a three. Uh, I could see it too, but I do currently have it at a, at a three. Uh, out of the commons for Geistoite, this is the card I don't want to see. Really? Yeah. This, this is, is the probably, card you don't want to see? This is the weakest common. That's, that's yeah. just is a it? statement on how good the commons are. Yeah, no, the commons the are house. very good, but th this one is uh, not my favorite. I, I'd have to look. Is it the weakest common? It could I very well could be. I kind of like it. Well, well, I mean, like left. half of your deck is creatures. Um, mathematically, so like fifty percent of the time it reaps for two, and it helps haunted. It's 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 a three for me. All right. Well, the next one is not the weakest common. Nope. No. I love this card. Haunted house artifact. At the start of your turn, if you are not haunted. Discard the top card of your deck. Omni. If you are haunted, gain a number. This nice. card comes in multiples, and nice. it, it is it is a better. Mecha buoy that you are in control of, and it haunts you. Yep. Uh, and do I dare I like the artwork for not caring about artwork? <laughs> yep. Haunted houses are cool. That do looks we, like it could be a. Do mess. we dare go with the six? No. I think I, I do. Think no. Oh, this is on. this is a uh, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think this is a six. I think this is a six, seven, eight. Or it might even be one of those like six, two. eight, tens. You can only get two. You can only oh you can only, oh it is it is limited to two? Yeah, it's like binding iron. Oh, okay. Either way, I'm giving it a six because I mean this card's just dumb. Yeah. In I the, am with in Andy the good and way. that that this card gets stolen a lot because there's a lot of Artifact stealing in this. Oh, in this the spontaneous this, awakening. Well, that's one of them, but there are others, and uh, this is definitely a prime target for yoinking. Yes, I'll have that. I do have it at a six, and it scales up to a plus one if uh, if you have if dose. You have the, if you have the second one, I did have two in my deck on Sunday. One of the games I did play both of them on my uh, first turn, and the game was over very fast. Yeah, I found that if you get these out quickly, it's the fact that you get haunted so quick, so you're already yeah. getting all the benefits so quickly, and then ev every turn after you're haunted, just gaining two a turn. Yep. Yeah, it's all it's right. Well, good. you know what? These cards have not been good, so let's look at something good. All right, right. That, card was just, yeah. that card was that card was only a six, so maybe we should look at another. O only a six. Five In here, or six. In here somewhere, Pip of Ember, every time you play it. If you are haunted, archive two cards from your discard pile. Otherwise, discard the top five cards of your deck. Like, the only wow. one of the, like, few actually good cards in DT was that Logos card that let like, you just Forget archive. It. And, then, and you had to pick two different kinds of types, cards. Two different types and no Pip. And that card was good. This card yes. is better. Yeah. Yes. Five, 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 six, five, six. Like, uh, you just, want all like just take your best cards in your deck that you just flipped off the top and put them in your archive for the time you need them. Like, uh, I do have it good. at a five. I do understand the vote for a six, but like, I have had so much fun playing this card. Like, I love the fact that you could, like, I'm going to gain an amber and then, hey, I'm going to archive Ecto Charge and Winds of Change. Like you show them the combo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I'm just gonna put those over here for later. Pass turn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all right. Ugh. Good. Yeah, infiltrator. Four power, specter robot, skirmish, treachery, versatile. At the end of your turn, destroy infiltrator's neighbor. Neighbors. 
neighbors. Sorry. I feel like I've seen this card before, and this is a better version of it. Yep, this is this just a much better caper? version. Much better version of Scully Caper. I don't know if I agree. Like, Scully's uh, a little smaller. He's but a he also power. skirmish. He also treachers. He also versatiles. So... And he also destroys a neighbor. So you can't is kill the, him. Is the four power enough difference? We do a lot of, like, we talked about that a long time ago in many casts, how there's a huge difference between one to two, two to three, and especially from three to four. A four power versatile skirmisher on the other side of the battle line, like... He does reap a lot. Like, that's... I mean, yeah, he's either reap or killing something that probably matters to you every single turn. Um, But he is keeping them, their board, pretty... Pretty Clear. beat down. Like, I've not felt too bad about playing this card. I also don't care for this card that much either. Like, this is, this is like the classic two. Like, it's, yeah. It could be worse, but I don't I, really I want do it. I ha- currently have it at a two because I just copied Scally Caper because that's really how I valued it. But I saw this in play on Sunday. And when it started killing, like, stuff I cared a lot more about. I felt a little bit bad about playing it. Um, more so than I would have if it was just the caper. <clears throat> so All right. right now it's still a two. This could go down. I feel like we're going to go through this line and call it a day. This is the biggest house that we've had thus far because it's, it is yep. all new cards. So I feel like let's get through this line uh of cards we're not halfway through the alphabet yet (laughs) right and um and you can we'll come back to geistoid because i mean number one it's just really good you you know what but let's finish on what is probably another six well we're we're gonna go all the way to the end of this line so we're gonna go to island of misfit toys artifact action return each geistoid card from your discard pile to your hand oh i wish it wasn't rare though but it is um purge island of misfit toys this this was in uh Loka Car Seal deck. Yeah. And this was just some bullshit. It like, sure was. Like, playing the game, playing the game, playing the game. And then he's like, you know what? I just get to play all 12 cards of this house this turn. How you feel about that? <laughs> uh, 11, 11 cards. <laughs> and I was like, um, well, one of them's the Acto Charge, so not very good. <laughs> GG, <laughs> buddy. Mm. You just start cleaning up your like, stuff you after you play. This. If you can't, this this is another card where it's like if you can't answer it, just towards the end of end of their deck, they're just like, and I play all of that house, and you're just like, huh, pass turn. Huh, how about that? Like, I almost wonder if this damn thing, this would probably still be a ridiculously good card if it said return each card and then something about after you play a card, purge it, and this would still be a crazy good card. Gain 12 chains. It doesn't matter. Your opponent draws 10 cards because you just won the game when you use this anyways. Yep. This should be one of those your opponent draws 10 cards cards. I uh, know. I like I don't know. I don't know if this is as uh, it was definitely broken and did just absolutely destroying things against me. This is this is a card that I had not seen. I had not seen in, in the I had not seen the stack this this card from the stuff at um kfc because i didn't pay that much attention to what people are having but man seeing it played this thing is bogus i would like one of bogus. these cards please <laughs> so is it a five or is it a six <laughs> i guess is the idea. question is it, just, is it just How straight a six asking the question like because this you is gotta, you gotta make good card. radio somewhere um they they hit all the highlights of why it's a six, except for one. Like obvi- the the most obvious combo there is ecto charge, but like you can't forget that key abduction is in set printed at uncommon. Like mm-hmm. late game, this also auto fires key abduction guys. <laughs> like pretty good. At least that's two stinking turns. <laughs> okay, yeah, this turn you do it. You fire. I'm just saying at least that's two stinking turns. Yeah, no, that's that's ridiculous, right? Like this is this card is I don't I mean like this is this is all this is another card where it's like, you know, Arise was considered good. Grim Reminders was considered good. 
let's just take all that shit and make it look <laughs> like like a misfit toy. This is this card is broken. It's broken for two different key cheats that you're gonna see oh, a lot of. It's that's... it's real good. That is not a Locarian combo, Locarian. This no, is just crazy. A... Like on a early turn with Futures Past, you play this, and you play yeah, your Futures you Past, <laughs> and then yeah. you play your Acto Charge, and then you just come back and play the other, well, the nine of cards that are left, and just go ha ha ha, or you have the key abduction, and it's just mm-hmm. yeah, it's yeah, you, you're winning on yeah. turn three. Yeah, very very good. At least it is hot draw. Like it's. A lot of the good cards, yeah. This is this is good. This it's is real good. good. This right. is a six. Yes. 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 It's we've a already six. we've already yes. went past that. Uh, junk restoration. Pip of Ember. No, every I time. That, wasn't that the end of the line? Nope, that's not the end of the line. That's the no, start of the line. Is your junk, screen? Oh, your junk screen. restoration. <laughs> um, Pip of Ember. Every time you can play it, enhanced with two dist or two tight pips. What? Tight pips. Right. That's what that's tight that's pips. what she was calling them. Tight, tight pips. Discard tight pips. pips make your deck play tight. You all right. All two, the trash and you play a tight game. Two tight pips. Yeah. Tight, tight pips. That's great, Z. Come on, roll with it. <laughs> nice and tight. Come on, just all just, right. just just go along with it. What are you doing? Uh, play I'm, discard. I'm go along with it. Discard I'm the top to, three cards. To tighten of, things up. Tight pips. Discard the top three cards of your deck. You may put a card discarded this way into your hand. So fairly Igor-ish, but yeah. it is a May. It is yep. a May effect. Yep. It is in order, and I already see people not doing that because you discard cards one at a time here. Right? Like at least I think that's how it's supposed to work. Like you would discard cards yep. one at a time until they're three, and you'd pick from the top three. I see people, they put them off to the side, they pick one, and then they kind of put them back in whatever order they want. Yes. Which is probably not correct. Right. No, it's 100% yeah. Oh, yeah. not you, correct. Yeah, you should definitely yeah. be discarding all three to your discard pile and then picking one of them and returning that one to your hand. That is the order of this card. So, people are playing this. Play it clean, right? Those cards go in in the way they flip from the deck. So, just try to play clean. Uh, but this card is crazy. I do feel like they just failed a bit on... Both either, either the the uh, flavor text or the name that has nothing about dumpster diving here. <laughs> mm. But uh, I also like to restore some junk because this card is pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean it's just better than Igor, right? I mean, is the, Igor was already really good. And two tight pips. Is like, the art a callback to the pip. helper bot? Are they like fixing a miniature helper bot there? Like, no, that's got like a skull face on it. I think that's it's like a little little uh-huh. voodoo doll. It could be yeah, a helper cool bot. Oh. I like it. I think it's a five. I think, yeah, I think it's a five. Is it only a five? Is it okay. a six? I don't think it's quite as good no, as it's being... a five. It's a five. It's like right in there within here somewhere. Yeah, it's mainly right because there. of the two tight pips. pips. Just uh, tight pips. Tight, tight, tight. Yeah, I had. I have in there somewhere a little, little above this, but this is still very good. The, I mean, I know, it is the, a... the, those tight pips make decks like there are some super tight decks out there. Mm-hmm. Mm. I am when I'm opening a new Grim Reminders deck. That is actually the first thing I'm really looking at yeah. is how many discard pips. And when there's like one or two, I am already just disappointed in the deck. Yeah, I'm just it's, like, especially this if is not going to be this house. This is not going to be fun. I didn't start this. looking for them until that deck I pulled a few weeks. Was it either a week or two ago? Where I had enough tight pips to just be like, yeah, I play two houses. Yeah, I don't. I don't have her. Tight. It's it really crazy. doesn't matter what my third house is. These are the two that I want to play. Especially like if all of the discard pips are on like Geistoid in Mars, and Mars has that other like common that lets you discard a non-Mars card. Like, like those decks play so fast. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I. Yeah. Oh, and I then there's some of them that have discard pips on them too. I, yeah, we haven't got there, but I really yep. like terrible teammates. Terrible teammates. Yeah, that's it. Good. Terrible teammates. Love that card. It's yep. very fun. All right, junkyard cemetery. 
while there is a com or it's an artifact, sorry, there is a com while there is a combined total of ten or more cards between your purge cards and discard pile, you are haunted. Action, purge a card in your discard pile. So this, um, I think this is a deck type card. If you like, this makes this can make haunted house decks, not haunted house, cursed house, cursed. Curse tomb. Relic. Curse tomb. Curse tomb. Curse tomb. We'll get to the words. Curse tomb. Far more playable because one of the things that I found with a curse tomb um, was that it made it hard to stay haunted, or hard to get haunted, or hard to make that big discard, which then made the um, then makes your acto charge harder to pull off, um, and you may still need to play curse tomb because it's the only way you can permanently control the other players. Or, like, there are reasons. Uh, this can play into that. On average, this card is probably not very good. But I think yeah. it may be meaningful in a few decks. Like, there will be a few decks where this is On the occasion. card that that makes it really sing a little better. I think it's going to be few and far between, though. I, I wouldn't boost the score much on this. I, I give it a 1. I wonder with this card, though, and, and a little bit of other purging, if you could find a deck that will play Geistoids as the only house, and you just get rid of everything else. You just play 10 cards, or 11 cards? Yeah. When you try to figure out how to play your Curse of Disappearance on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> curse of Forgetfulness. Forgetfulness, yeah. <laughs> so you can um, just discard Pip, purge, discard Pip, purge, and I originally added this thing at a one. Um, I did see it do some interesting things, and Infernus does exist, which I expected Furnace to have a comeback. I moved it up to a two just because a it comeback. Does have Where'd some, it go? Uh, Woe killed it. Oh, it all got moved to Alliance. <laughs> What's Alliance? I don't know. Hopefully, a Friday event. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the cast. Maybe we'll find out in April, but maybe we won't. But maybe yeah, we won't. We'll find out the day of oh. April. Let's go to what cast. Do you, what do you guys want to play? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sealed, yeah. please. Let's go to Caspara. It is a Spectre okay, robot. X is the combined total. So it has X for power. X is the combined total of Ember between each player's pools. Each friendly Geistoid creature gains play slash destroyed. Each player gains an ember. It means this happens immediately. Oh, I played that wrong. So, uh, you, uh, if you friendly have... Geistoid creature. Wow, okay. So, if you have zero amber when you play this, he comes into play. Say, say both players have zero. It's the first card you play, right? He has zero power, He'll so die. he gets marked as destroyed. Mm -hmm. And dies before his play effect goes off. But the destroyed effect does happen. And then you'll have one amber. Okay. Yep. yep okay. So will and so will they. Just, just thinking about the that that is a thing. I'm sure that'll get played wrong where people play this, give themselves an amber, and keep them alive. But that's not how it would work. Uh, it's the first card played. Uh, I have seen this played against mm. me, and once they're key ahead, because this set doesn't do amazing. Scaling Amber Control often. Once they're key ahead, they just push hard and go, eh, whatever. That I've, seems I've fair. seen that done with Caspera. Uh, and lost. That seems fair. So, so that and happens. Really, if but you're it a is, little bit behind, you almost can't play it in set. I don't like it. Also any. true. And it gets awkward if you're up against DMTPs and graphs and all that, right? So... I was almost about to say, are we sure this isn't the worst common, but this is rare, so. Uh, I mean, it's going to be. Uh, mm, no. It's very situational. No. One. I think it's no. better than that. Uh, it's been played for wins more than once I've seen. Really? And it's been the card that causes the game to end and then win. Well, I played it wrong, so. I have to figure it. Yeah, I have to figure out how to. You're you're a dirty cheater. Dirty yep. cheater. Yep. Okay. 
I don't like it, but... Yes, like Dexter is saying, it is like Diplomat, and Diplomat wins games sometimes, too. And sometimes you can't replay it. It it is a thing, right? Like, it's... It is... You can't always play it, but it can cause runaway game state. Hold it, too. Let's just not think it. And then they all destroy, so you play all your Geistoids and you destroy all your Geistoids because you're key ahead and then just say, you can't stop me because I have 22 Amber? Is this better inset than out of set because of scaling Amber? Yeah, I think against scaling Amber, it's a problem. But there's so many key cheats in this set. Like, this thing can really last. Done. Sure. Then, Then you don't play it. I mean, then he goes in the discard. I don't know. What is easy? He's two slathered. I have him at a one, and he always comes with these shitty other cards that we haven't talked about yet. Oh he, yeah, he does. He has. Oh, he's. Oh like, wait. The uh, it's. I think Dexter said it. It's the fragments. Oh, they I come know. with. I didn't know he was like precocious, precocious fragments. Oh. oh. They are linked. I did not know that. Um, and those aren't good cards. So, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, okay. So this guy is a I, like if he didn't come with them, like I would have given him a two. I mowed him down to one because he comes with those because he still does have some value, and even those have some value. So, like, I don't think I can go to a zero here, and I think he can actually be linked to one of them. So unlike the clock shit where you get like half your pod, um, it can be one or two cards. If it was three of them all the time, it would definitely be a zero. But I'm I need to go look at some more decks, but I'm pretty sure he can come with just one of the fragments. The one I have has two. But you know. How many more cards? We got one more? We have three more. We have Mamat. Three more. So another boss ass common one power specter fairy archive or play destroyed archive the top card of your discard pile play and destroyed yep. and this card oh so good card's super good just a damn so powerhouse good. common like I uh, every you know like they do get to destroy it sometimes to make you have a messy archive sort of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, that's where those tight pips. They come in, also though. sometimes go. I can't destroy it because you'll archive a good card, so I have to leave it, and then you come back and reap with it, mm-hmm. or fight and archive some other good card. This thing, or this is, yeah, this good, or and he gets a bomb ass tight pip on him, and you're allowed to discard a card from your hand and then archive oh, yeah. that card. He, he also has a very excellent creepy flavor text. You will make an excellent friend. Duh. <laughs> but he's kind of looking at a dead body. Right? Yeah. Yep. He's a creeper. Yep. Pretty good. Yeah. I think that's what Ewok said to all of us. Yeah. Is he walked back yet? <laughs> nope. He's off making somebody an excellent friend. Ooh. <laughs> I know he said he'd be back. He and then I don't know whatever happened. Um, I don't know. I really like him at. Like really, really like Mamet. Yeah, it's it's very good. Occasionally, like you're playing, you know, your junk restorations. I have never had a. I have never had that. Yeah, I have never had. That's that's actually great. (laughs) Yeah, he's fantastic with junk wreck. Yeah, or your boo, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Occasionally, you you just put your boo back. Like he's. Yeah, it's good. Just he's. It's a five. This is a five. Yeah, it's gotta be right. Uh, it... I had it at a four. Yeah, I moved up to a five. There's no reason for it not. I was gonna say it doesn't scale up as you get more of them, though, right? No, it does not. It goes to a twelve. A... Goes to eleven. So, I'm guys, we improved the Geistoid score today. Um, cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. Like, like this is the house I passed. I passed so many times trying to like lower it, which is probably why my met was at a four. But like, I I played with my met. Not this last one, I didn't have it, but I did the the weekend before it, and it's just stupid good. It's just so dumb. Like I had a, I had two Mamets, and one of them had a discard pip. It was just bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is even better. <laughs> it, it's, it's just, just it's like so a... dumb. 
I'm going to discard yeah. the. I mean, definitely Archive. I'll be archiving this card. Yep. It doesn't yeah, say uh, that, but it might as well. But it's not just, it's not, yeah, it's just archive efficiency. Just Ar- so And then just, on the flip. Um, on the flip side, too. Like, it destroy, too. Like, it's so good. All right, well, let's mend Love something. Him. Mender, mender two power, two armor, specter robot, play slash after reap. Purge a card from your discard pile. Fully heal and ward each robot creature. From a discard pile. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it from A? Mm-hmm. Yep. A discard pile. Oh. Fully heal and ward each robot creature. Very one side. What does he link with? So, if you're going to do... Uh, uh, Alright, so he's not linked. So he shares a rarity slot with Soul Tinder. What do you mean he shares a rarity slot? So, like, a long time ago, we had Master of 1, Master of 2, yeah. Master of 3. Yeah. They shared a rare. So like when you pulled e- like that rare slot without you'd rhythm, pull a said, master said and you'd master, get a version. you would get one of the three. Oh. This sh- shares an ender slot. If you pull that as your rare, you get one of the two. So Too he is actually tender? more rare than any other rare in this set. So what? you will see half as many of them in decks than any other rare. So... <clears throat> A lot of like a lot of the power we've kind of been talking about within this house has been off. They're destroyed, or like they have amber, and then they get something for having the amber on them. Uh, this, in a way, slows that gameplay down. But it also, if you just got a bunch of amber captured, because oh. there's like there are what like two creatures in this house that are not robots. Yeah, and it also of robots. It is a two-sided ward, though. It'll ward theirs too. Oh, yes, yeah, but yeah. outside of set, there are yeah. not that many robots. Mm-hmm. My son pulled a deck with one of these, and I explained what I just went to all to him. Um, and it few. was really cool because he had some robots in Star Alliance as well, yeah. and he was just able to ward his whole board and then just go to time. And, and then hilarious it- enough. The Grim Reaper is a robot. Yeah, every time you reap uh, this, the like, this is play end after reap. Yeah, no, it's you're great. like very good uh, against offset, and you just keep getting to take away their best cards and keep mm-hmm. your ridiculous board going. Like this is gonna. Oh, and he shit. wards himself. He wards himself. Yeah. So you got to do four damage twice, or you know, four damage, damage on the second the, hit, yeah. or or yeah, it's good. I think, yeah, this card seems like it should be really strong. As five. Ironically, the other one's better. Um, huh. Uh, we'll have to scroll down because these are in a special slot. I have them at a four. That was before I saw it played. I am moving it up to a five right now. Until you play no, it against, and that, against somebody with Geistoids and be like, this card sucks. It's a two. <laughs> like all of you. Well, there are more specters than robots actually and the other one is is Spectre. most of them are specter robots but there are some that are specter vehicle yeah and, and, so you know what actually, and then there are some that are just specter what what makes this card what could have made this card good is if it would have awarded the clocks to make them actually stick around and do their things oh my god no. but he doesn't ward clocks so he's so clocks continue to stink, and he continues to be good. But the clocks are That's... specters. The other one will ward them. Oh, is the other one ward specters? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I okay. actually have Mender in my clock deck, so there you go. Well, yeah, that's the wah, not wah. good. All right, All right so this, this is a four, four. Yeah. Four. Okay, but maybe yeah. a five. Maybe a five. A, Probably a four. Good card. What'd you say, Wish? Um, it's a five. It's a five. Yeah, All right. I, like this card, if you have this and four other cre- four other robots on board, like that's just this mm-hmm. is like board win. Pretty good. Yeah, that's what Z was doing. He was just reaping out with the boards, rewarding everything, and using the Grim Reaper to purge, and then rewarding everything. It was really funny. All right, last card for the night, and we'll call it the Green Goblin. I mean, mischievous. Three power okay. Spectre robot. Do you, you do not see the Green Goblin in this? A little bit. I with see the, it with the little b- bombs. Yeah, with the bombs. 
I got you. Three power specter oh. robot after a friendly geyser creature enters play. Each player discards the top two cards of their deck. After reap, play the topmost creature from your discard pile. Wow, does this turn a lot of cards? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you ever get use out of the second ability. I mean, if it reaps, it's good. Yeah. If it reaps, I mean, it's very power. good. It also dies quickly. But, I don't know. This card... Well, yeah, but, like... This is like Hunting Witch or whatever, right? Or, or I mean, like, which the... Witch of the Wild? No. No. The witch that brings back a card. It's that kind of sort of good. Or there's the other two ones. There's the the Inspector Lee guy from Star Alliance who but he enters play ready sometimes. No, yeah. those, those are all way better than this this one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But this is that quality of effect, but the other ones are a little easier to make it happen. The Dr. Zixel Fricks too. Uh -huh. But that actually it's play it and ready it. And you get to choose any Mars creature. Uh, this is just topmost. But like this, this effect is like you're gonna be happy to do this reap effect. But it is hard to do. The discarding after playing a Geistoid doesn't feel meaningful to me at this point. So this leaves it in the huh? two range because it's just gonna die all the time. Huh? Yeah, I, I think VR guys. On... All the other cards that allow you to play, but you're all doing it to your opponent. Okay, so I can be our guys. That, my, I can I can be our guys. Effect. My opponent too. It okay. All right, sure. That's that is a potential place. That I I'm not saying it doesn't do anything. I'm just saying I don't feel like it's like super duper meaningful. And it's one of those things like you might not be able to play a Geistoid creature because it's going to knock you out of Haunted faster because this is every time. It's important to focus. Like, she is also linked to for protective playmates. Okay. I didn't know. I protective did know. playmates. They're taunty creatures. While you're haunted, they get plus six power. And while you're Otherwise, not, it's elusive. Yep. Okay, so they're really big taunters, which makes her a little easier to do her thing. They thankfully don't say can't reap. I don't think that I don't think taunt reduced means, her does, value. Does taunt mean jack anymore? Well, when they you got creatures like something. this, they're, they're, they're not bad taunts. They they are. Well, I mean, but splash things. attack is like real. Like that is a real thing that we have to face every single week. Like splash attack. Inset, yeah. Inset, well, and well. Eh, so two there, two extraordinarily popular common. sets. I I that still leaves her in the two three range for me, based off of those. Like that prop, it's just it's fine, but I'm definitely not searching out to have her. Well, she's rare too, so. Hey. I mean, I search out Artanu decks. So That's because you're weird, not because you're... Okay. <laughs> well, but this card is more like that kind of just like, you know, it's not bad. Somebody might like it, and it's fine. But I don't see this like being like, yeah, this is why I'm winning a tournament. Yeah, no, I don't think it's winning anything. So <laughs> No. I think you're in. I think you're right in the 2-3 range. I think it's a lot more versatile than you're giving it credit for, but... Uh, or at least the main ability. I don't think you ever. Yeah. The, I don't think you ever get the second ability to fire. I go take a Caspera over her. Yeah, I don't want either one. So uh, just, yeah, okay. So okay, play a card is... to give everyone a number. Yep. Uh, At least you get an amber. I, I guess. I, uh, uh, two for this, I think. I think. I think two is proper. I do have her at a two, and then I have the her buddies starting at a three, but they start scaling down. You can just get two playmates, um, but there are decks that have five of them, so that sucks. Taunt on taunt on taunt Duff. on taunt. They're not even robots, so when you get your no. super rare mischievous yep. mender deck, you, you can't even mend your playmates. Tinder. Soul tinder. Yeah, you want soul tender instead. Yeah, you basically always want soul tender, but if you get mender, you should still be happy because it's good. 
All right. right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. We're going to split these guys into two because it's getting late and there is still, I believe, five rows of cards to go through. So it is bedtime for Archon's Corner. Thank you guys all for listening to us again this week. Don't forget, go over to Patreon.com. Throw us a dollar. Get some AC, uh, some AC imports. That was ten dollars. Well, I think a dollar gets you gets you some imports for draw better. Or yeah, a dollar gets better, you like thirty imports yeah. and a Z score. Ten dollars gets you like a ton of imports and several Z scores. Yeah, and making Z do work is our favorite way to get paid. I so, guess. They could just give us two dollars because they like us. They could, <laughs> but Most that's of not how any of this works. They, they might give us money to stop talking, but it's not for liking us. I mean, let's be if honest. you give hey, us enough money, we will find a way. To tell you what, we got the new five hundred dollars tier, which is we just skip <laughs> an episode one one week a month. And in addition, there are still events on Sunday nights. Uh, yeah, and then Loka cars on Wednesday. Sunday, I've decided to say the heck with it, and we're playing Grim Reminders on the dev server, because what, what other sets are there? Well, what, what, what was that? What was that? What's, what's that? Okay. That was still good. Don't forget, go to a, go to a pre-release event. Go we to a store championship. Store championships are yep. coming up. Maybe, Shit. maybe you can go to a vault tour. Maybe they are working Maybe. hard. Hard Very at work. Nice. I hope so. Forty hours a week. You know, and forty hours a week, twenty of them are getting coffee. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then what? What did you say? Twenty of them are coffee. Ten of them are in the can. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's ten hours. That's that's thirty hours right there. Like <laughs> done. And then there's. Then there's working lunches. Yeah, you right. gotta eat at the bar. Right. So hour of lunch, that's you know. Oh no, they're working days. lunches. They're that's, two hours. Oh. So that's what was that? Five that's another and ten hours and the day is over. Yeah, that's clearly it. That's drinking. It. There's no more hours. There's, there's, yeah. there's no, no, time no, 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 no. No, there's no time there's left. No now we're we gotta cut out a coffee time if we wanna do anything else. And yeah, they'd have to pay them overtime to get Yeah, those people. we can't we can't cut into coffee time. That's not allowed. No, nope. no, no, no. I agree. No, coffee time we need is coffee essential. time. So but that's gonna do it for us this week. Did did JR ever come back? Yes. Did he? Okay. Yeah, I've been oh. talking, so Oh, have you? <laughs> Glad that I uh, mean a lot to you, Wookie. We've already started on the edit out feature. <laughs> <laughs> Wookie paid for it this week. Yeah. Right, well, I'm glad that uh, apparently I'm the one edited out. Love you guys. No, no. This will all be in there. But thank you guys all for listening. We appreciate you. We'll see y'all next week. Happy Forging, everyone. May the Forge be with you. I'm tired. I, I see that. Listen well.